select your demo will cover the cells and batteries. And is a device that is uh, capable of uh, converting uh, chemical energy to electrical energy. It is a combination of uh, metals known as uh, electrodes. These are the metals. Immerse into a chemical solution. This yellow, colored yellow, uh, the chemical solution known as uh, Electrolytes. Typical solution all uh, uh, sulfuric acid and uh, hydrochloric acid. Cells are classified as a primary and secondary cell. Primary cells are disposable cells because uh, when it is when when discharged, it cannot uh, reverse the chemical reaction. So, these cells are disposed after discharging the energy. While secondary cells are cells that uh, can be recharged and uh, restore chemical condition completely by reversing the chemical process. This is uh, this figure is. Uh, shows a, a, a battery with a load uh, long, uh, bulb with bulb as a load and here is our switch the positive and negative terminal connecting to the electrode the uh, positive terminal is uh, known as the cathode The cathode, uh, this is the terminal where the current comes in the battery. Now, uh, this figure is the equivalent schematic diagram for the battery. We use this uh, battery for many purposes. One is that uh, it, it can serve as a backup, backup uh, source of energy. And uh, also it is used in uh, as an auxiliary source of energy. Uh, for example, uh, on uh, control, controlling uh, equipment and also uh, for communication. So that is why it is uh, very important uh, to understand the uh, concepts of uh, cells and batteries. Commonly used storage battery are uh, liquid acid type, uh, nickel iron alkali type, and uh, nickel cadmium alkali type. Batteries are uh, rated based on a uh, 8 hour rate of uh, discharge. Example, if we have a battery that uh, can discharge uh, 40 ampere continuous discharge continuous discharge in uh, 8 hours then the battery is uh, rated as uh, 40 times 8 or 320 ampere 
hours. That's how we rate the battery. So, in this schematic diagram, the, the E is the internal EMF of the battery. And the small r is the internal resistance of the battery. These are the resistances of the material used to constitute a battery. And RL is uh, our load resistance. And current I is the current supplied to the load. The B sub T is the terminal voltage of the battery. And that is the voltage between the positive and the negative terminal of the battery. When cells or batteries are on discharge, it means it, it delivers the current into the load then the equations involving discharge of battery that uh, E is equals to the terminal voltage plus the drop at the internal resistance of the battery and the voltage supplied to the load with current I passing through the load we can say that uh, the terminal voltage is equal to the current supplied times the load resistance. The, another equation that can be used involving this uh, circuit is that um, to place the terminal voltage with the uh, IRL, then uh, we have one equation involving current and the resistances in the circuit. From these three equations, we can determine the current I depending on depending on what uh, parameters are given. The equation of voltage is equal to the terminal voltage plus the IR being multiplied with uh, the current I gives us IE times I plus uh, I square times R. This is the power input. This is the power output, and this is the losses. <clears throat> the power output is the power delivered to the load, and uh, get the efficiency of the delivery of the power from the input to the load. The input power gives us the efficiency since this is uh, I times BT over I times uh, supply voltage times 100 to make it percent. I, I will cancel out so we can determine the efficiency of the battery and the transmission of power. That's uh, simply the ratio of the voltage at the load or at the terminals divided by the supply voltage or the internal EMF of the battery. Charging of batteries is that uh, for uh, secondary cells or secondary batteries we can uh, uh, recharge the battery and uh, maintain its uh,
maintain its uh, charge condition by reversing the process. And we can uh, obtain the fully charged condition of the battery uh, either using a, a rectifier or a DC generator. So let us consider that uh, our supply is uh, BS. This is the supply of the charger. And then we have here the limiting resistor RX to protect the battery from uh, overcurrent. And here is our battery. Now the voltage to be supplied in the battery is the B sub T. We have to maintain the current to be uh, rated current of the battery. It should not, the battery, the current going to the battery should not exceed its uh, rated uh, current. Else it will damage the, uh, the battery. The voltage at the terminals of the battery, since uh, the current now is uh, going into the battery, then the terminal voltage should be larger than the E. And it should be equals to the E plus the drop in the internal resistance. Now, uh, there is a limiting resistor Rx in series with the battery to adjust the current to its safe value. So, therefore, the total supply voltage would be the terminal voltage plus the drop in the limiting resistor. In, um, substituting the V terminal is will now be the voltage needed to supply to be supplied to the battery to for to charge the battery. And um, I get the current necessary for the Charging it is the BS over E minus the total resistance of the circuit, which is the RX and the internal resistance of the battery. The RX may also be determined, that is, if uh, we, know, we know the BS, and, um, we can calculate for RX. If, uh, if, uh, if we have measured the supply voltage and we know the rating of the battery E and the rated current of the battery and the internal resistance of the battery, then we can determine what would be the or calculate the resistance uh, setting of the limiting resistor. The maximum power transfer for batteries. So we have here a battery. So for maximum power transfer.
it if we have a variable log and uh, if we vary the resistance RL the current would either would increase or decrease and, uh, the current and power supplied is uh, limited by the internal resistance of the battery applying maximum minima and, uh, the characteristic of the uh, maximum power transfer is that uh, the variable resistance which is the load should be equal to the uh, constant resistance for to attain to attain the uh, condition of maximum power transfer and the resistance that limits the transfer of power is uh, the internal resistance of the battery and our variable resistance is the load resistance so these two must be equal for uh, condition of maximum power transfer and uh, in maximum power transfer uh, the efficiency of the system is uh, 80% 80% so half of the power supplied is lost in the internal resistance <coughs> now, cells uh, could be connected in series and this is uh, done to attain uh, a certain level of voltage especially when uh, the cells are uh, short of the necessary voltage to be supplied so we can connect cells in a series to attain the level of the voltage necessary for the circuit. Let us consider uh, three cells connected in series. In, uh, to approach this uh, type of uh, problem in batteries, we need we need to we need to combine combine all these cells in series into a single cell, and then we can now apply all the three formulas involving this uh, single equivalent battery that's uh, what we have discussed in the discharge of resistors a uh, discharge of batteries so we have to simplify the circuit into this equivalent single cell and apply this uh, three formulas for voltages and these uh, two formulas for current if we are able to simplify the series cells into single cell so how to simplify this uh, series of cells into single cell since uh, these cells are in series with series A, B by the way, uh, cells are uh, written in a symbol of uh, two parallel plates. The larger, the longer plate is uh, positive and the smaller plate is positive, uh, negative. So, these cells, these cells are connected in series A B when uh, the negative terminal of the first cell is uh, connected to the positive terminal of the second cell and the negative terminal of the second cell connected to the positive terminal of the third cell and therefore they are series aiding series aiding means that they would help with each other in uh, no opposition to the EMF that uh, uh, would cause a decrease in the internal EM.
to obtain the single cell for the equivalent circuit since uh, cells are in series we can simply add all the internal emf of the cells that are connected in series and also we can add up all the internal resistance of the cells connected in series and then having a single cell uh, single uh, cell equivalent single cell then we can now apply formula symbol being this uh, equivalent circuit which is we have a total i total the sub key terminal voltage and the current to the load il or simply i so we can apply this formula it is the e total is equals to terminal voltage plus the drop in the internal resistance which is uh, i times the internal resistance or we can use the terminal voltage is equals to i times the rl or we can use the terminal voltage is equals to i times the sum of the rl and the internal resistance we can calculate the current either using the first formula or the, or the second formula or the third formula. Cells and batteries may be connected in parallel and this is going uh, to increase the current capacity of the combination. And, uh, there are uh, two cases for uh, cells in uh, parallel. This one is that all cells are, cells are having uh, equal EMFs or cells are identical. When cells are identical and connected in parallel, that uh, means E1 and E2 and E3 are equal. When they are equal, we can say that uh, the terminal, the E total, the E total would be equal to the internal EMF of the cells. Then the total resistance, the internal EMF shall be treated as a parallel resistors to get the total resistance and then we have now the single cell equivalent circuit and we can apply the three formulas involving for this circuit we use these formulas is I either to determine the terminal voltage or the current in the circuit now uh, calculate for the current current uh, supplied by each battery or what we call load division uh, after uh, determining the terminal voltage of the circuit using the uh, single cell equivalent circuit from here we can uh, determine the value of the circuit if we know the V sub T, then we can now go back to this uh, original circuit wherein there are three cells in parallel and consider, consider the cell E1. If we consider cell E1, the terminal voltage of the cell E1 is uh, V sub T. And uh, the current it supplied is uh, I sub 1. 
and internal EMF E1 and R1. Now, applying the equation, the first equation that we use in the uh, single cell equivalent circuit, we have E1 to be the voltage of the battery that is equals to the terminal voltage plus the current supplied by the battery times R1. So this is uh, the basic equation involved in a single cell equivalent circuit. And we can apply this in the branch of the battery E1. And knowing V sub T and E sub 1 and the uh, internal resistance of the battery, we can now compute for the I sub 1, which is the difference of E1 and the terminal voltage divided by R1. We can also apply the same procedure in uh, calculating for I2, which is uh, considered the branch of the E2, and this will give us this equation. And also, we can apply the same procedure to calculate for the I3 of the branch E3. In case 2, there are uh, cells connected in parallel which are not identical or having different EMFs. If, uh, there are, if the cells are of different EMFs, let us consider the, the cells to be uh, without load. But only the two cells are connected in parallel. And let us assume that uh, E sub 1 is greater than E sub 2. And this would mean that E sub 1 will uh, provide a current, a current in the circuit that would uh, circulate between these two cells that are connected in parallel. And to calculate for this uh, I sub O, we shall simply get the difference of the internal EMF E1, E2, and divide it with the uh, resistances R1 and R2. So this is the current I sub O, the circulating current supplied by a battery having higher internal EMF. Then after that, we can now calculate the new or the total internal EMF of the combination, which is either we subtract the drop in the branch of the inter, uh, E1, that is uh, the I sub R1, meaning there is a decrease of uh, voltage in the internal EMF E sub 1 because of the current supplied, the current I sub O supplied by the E1. Or we can consider the branch of the E2 wherein there is an, uh, there is an increase in the voltage of this branch E2 due to the, due to the current I sub O that uh, producing a voltage in the internal resistance of E sub 2. Both equations will give same uh, total internal EMF it is uh, the decrease in E1 or an increase in E2 due to the uh, voltage consumed by the inter internal resistances. Then R total, since they are connected in parallel, 
can be determined using the simple formula of a product over sum. Also, uh, the e total or the total internal EMF of the combination may be determined using this formula without calculating the uh, circulating pattern. After uh, determining the total internal EMF, we can now apply again the same formula same formula that uh, we have been using for uh, single cell equivalent circuit. The load division for the two cells in parallel uh, is uh, of the same form in uh, in uh, cells with uh, identical cells so we can apply the same uh, procedure for uh, calculating the current supplied by each battery for an equal uh, batteries an equal internal emf of batteries 